Meanwhile, Sari's expression grows tense as she tries to make her way through the dense text. Up until now, their expressions have been reversed, with Sayuri easily navigating social situations and Yuri struggling in them. But the tables have turned. Wait, are they talking about the past right now, or the present? Where? Right here. They're talking about the past. These paragraphs are described as describing a flashback that Baroness is having. But they didn't tell me that. It's implied from the context. Sayuri rubs her temples. The two of them continue with Sayuri asking fewer questions. She begins to understand the value in the notes as she finds herself referring to them somewhat often and even adding to them. But a reduction in question comes not from her getting used to the reading, but rather from her fearing that she'll come across as stupid. <laughs> At last, Sayuri reaches the end of the chapter. I think we can stop here for now. Okay. Sayuri takes a deep breath and closes what little of the book she's gotten through so far. So, what are your thoughts up to this point? Um, Sayuri tries to find words. Am I doing well so far? Um, I'm not sure I understand. Well, I don't know. When it takes me so long to read and understand things, it makes me feel really dumb. <laughs> but I really like how into it you get. It makes me want to keep going and to keep doing my best so I can see it the way you do. The relaxation in Yuri's expression fades. I see. Yuri quietly gathers her things. We can continue tomorrow, right? Yuri pauses then shakes her head. We can do something else tomorrow. But I'm sorry. Wait, sorry for what? I don't understand. I'm sorry. I don't want to do this anymore. That's all. I'm sorry that I made you. Yuri leaves. You weren't making me. Sherry is left alone with her words. How did this happen? We were having fun just a second ago. It's my fault. I said something stupid and hurt her. I should have just told her that I enjoyed it. Monica trusted me with this. It's the only thing I'm good at, and I still mess it up. What if she doesn't want to come back tomorrow? Charmed and Gil, Sayuri stares blankly at her desk, read with notes. The book sits next to them. Right, if she wasn't coming back, then she wouldn't have left the book here, right? Unless she just forgot to take it with her. Uh, this is horrible. Was it really because she thought I wasn't enjoying our time together? Or maybe she wasn't enjoying our time together because I'm not good enough. I probably let her down so much by having trouble following along. Yeah, I'm sure if I was smarter she would have be having so much more fun. I need to do better for her. For the first time, Sayuri is the first to enter the club room. Anxiety courses through her relentlessly. Will Yuri show up today? Sitting at a desk, she stamps her feet in an attempt to calm down. <laughs> Why am I letting this affect me so much? I'm doing everything I can to make Yuri happy. But my best wasn't good enough. But it was still my best. But I'm letting everyone down. I'm always just a disappointment. Sarah continues to wrestle with her self-depreciating thoughts. Every tiny noise causes her to lift her head in anticipation of Yuri's arrival. Minutes pass and nobody enters the club room. Not Yuri or Monica. Gosh, I'm so late. Why did I offer to help those other students with their work? I'm such a pushover sometimes. It's going to leave such a bad impression on new club members like Yuri if I'm not the first one there. Marka rounds the corner approaching the club room. As she does so, uh, Yuri? Ah! Yuri jumps at the sound of Marka's voice. She's sitting outside the club room against the wall next to the door. Embarrassed, she quickly closes the book she was reading and stands up. Oh gosh, I'm so sorry I'm late. You didn't have to wait outside for me. The door to the club room is open. It's not. Yuri stammers, unable to explain herself. She peers inside the club room through the window, then looks away. Actually, I was just... I was wondering if I could help you today instead. Huh? Me? With club publicity stuff? Yes. Monica is utterly confused. Why is Jerry asking this all of a sudden, when she was so eager to spend time with Sayori before? Did they not get along after all? Monica looks into the club room herself to see Sayori sitting alone inside. Okay. It's kind of a simple job, but I'd be happy for you to tag along. Me too. Monica is worried, but she finds it difficult to insert herself into whatever conflict that may have arisen. It's a little ironic she realizes that she could be so conflict avoidant after having been in the debate club. Okay, let's walk together. I just have to make copies of this new flyer, then go around to the billboards and replace the old ones with new ones. Yuri nods and the two set off. The two walk in silence. Without Sayuri, Monica finds it quite difficult to strike up conversation. So, how has everything been going? Fine. That's good. Neither of them follow up with anything more. 
Market tenses up at the stinted conversation. How the heck does Sayori do it? Uh, sorry I didn't see you yesterday. I went straight to the computer lab to work on the flyers. Um, Sayori told me. What did you two end up doing yesterday? Just some reading. Oh, I'm glad. It's really starting to feel more like a literature club now. Yeah. It's kind of funny, I felt so intimidated at first when I heard about the kind of reading you were into. But you know, it's kind of stupid of me, because I'm just intimidated by things I'm not good at. And it's silly to assume that everyone who comes to the club will just have the same interests as me. But it's so cool that you were able to get Sayori into it. It's like the club is working. I'm really happy about that. She's not into it. Huh? She's not into it. And I'm stupid for forcing her into it. Yuri falls silent again as... If she started her thought, her book can't figure out how to continue it. Did something happen? Yuri sighs. No, it's just me. I just... Yuri pauses. Um, I'm thinking... A moment passes in silence, then Yuri shakes her head. I shouldn't be complaining to you all of a sudden. Don't be silly. I won't think you're complaining. I just want to make sure you feel welcome. If it's important to that, then you can tell me anything. Well, I do feel welcome. Too welcome, I guess. It's not an issue with the club. It's just an issue with me. So I feel wrong to inconvenience you with it. Uh... Monica pauses and thinks. Well, what if we put it this way? It's my job as president to understand the needs of the club members, right? We're going to have all kinds of people joining this club. Hopefully, anyway. And learning about the diverse needs and interests of everyone will help me come up with club activities that everyone can be happy with. That everyone can be happy with? Not just only some people? Of course. I need to be looking out for everyone. Otherwise, what kind of club would it be? I see. Yuri looks a little more relaxed. It signals to Monica that switching from a sympathetic approach to a pragmatic one was a good choice. Each individual truly does have their own needs. Okay. Yuri takes a deep breath. I'm a really weird and awkward person. I've accepted that about myself. I just don't know how to, I guess, connect with other people. How is it so easy for everyone else? How do you just make conversation about any arbitrary topic? I could talk for hours about the things I'm into. Unfortunately, so much that I don't know when to stop. But for anything else, I just have no idea what to say. So I understand that about myself. I'm just not good with people. I can't help it. So it feels like whenever I'm confronted with a new social situation, I'm either ignored or made fun of or taken pity on. And Sayori falls into that third category. She... what? Hold on, you're saying that Sayori is taking pity on you? Yuri nods. I just want to be treated like a normal person. If you don't like me or you don't connect with my interest, then just tell me. I can accept that and move on. Sayori is too nice to me. Mm -hmm.